The global ocean is a superocean from 200 million AD that surrounds the new supercontinent of Nova Pangaea. The mass extinction of 100 million AD did not just ravage life on land. Life in the oceans was profoundly affected. 2. Active volcanoes filled the sky with ash and dust, cutting out the sunlight for months on end. Acid rain, formed by sulfur compounds belched out by volcanoes, fell continuously into the sea. The lack of sunlight and the increase of acidity killed off the plankton in the surface waters and led to a catastrophic collapse in the oceanic food chain. Most bony fish suddenly died away, as did countless other marine creatures. Where once the oceans had teemed with life, they became almost barren. But nature does not leave ecological niches vacant for long. The animals that survived the mass extinction did so because they took shelter in the deepest, most remote refuges of the ocean. Once conditions had stabilized, bony fish were mostly replaced by completely new forms of life. It is now 200 million AD. The planet is dominated by a single, giant landmass called Nova Pangaea. One continent means one ocean, the global ocean, a body of water so vast that its center lies 16,000 kilometers from the nearest coast. This uninterrupted expanse of water helps to determine the extreme weather conditions of the planet. The intense heating of the atmosphere at the equator draws in trade winds from the north and south. These converge and blow westwards along the equator, driving permanent ocean currents before them. The result is a constant equatorial gyre, an immense circulatory current that involves the whole ocean. The global current makes it easy for sea life to migrate, and so the global ocean is populated by very cosmopolitan groups of animals. As the predominant ocean currents run east to west, there is little water movement between north and south. The cold waters of the South Pole do not mix with the warm waters of the equator. The result is a steep temperature gradient between high and low latitudes. However, worldwide temperatures are still too high for there to be a polar ice cap. This single ocean is a complex environment supporting intricate food chains and highly evolved species, quite unlike anything known from the reign of humanity. Why? Sometimes brewing over the global ocean are extreme hurricanes called hypercanes, 50% stronger than previous hurricanes with winds gusting at 400 km per hour. The reason for this is because since a supercontinent is always surrounded by a superocean, the energy balance of the globe changes. There is a lot more energy, a much warmer ocean, much more energy is transferred into the atmosphere, creating more powerful storms. This species of silver swimmer roams the ocean in shoals. A complex array of antennae and bristles at the front of the animal enables it to filter out fine particles of plankton from the water and sweep them into its mouth. The common silver swimmer is a species of social filter feeding silver swimmer native to the global ocean of 200 million AD. It is the most common silver swimmer species, and the most abundant animal of the global ocean. Silver swimmers have descended from marine crustaceans which developed neoteny the ability to reproduce in a larval stage, in the immediate aftermath of the 100 million AD mass extinction. With the oceans almost completely free of fish, they quickly branched out to fill almost all the marine niches. The common silver swimmer specifically fills the niche of fish, and of filter-feeding animals. The common silver swimmer has a large and armored, yet lightweight head, bristly legs on its underside, and a segmented tail which drives it through the water with an up and down motion. A complex array of antennae and bristles hanging around its mouth parts enables the animal to filter out fine particles of plankton from the water, then sweep them into its mouth. Common silver swimmers roam the ocean in large shoals. As a very common and relatively small animal, the common silver swimmer is a primary food source for several species of ocean fish. One species has even evolved to follow migrating shoals of silver swimmers right across the global ocean. It is also a minor prey item for sharkopaths. Ocean flish have filled the niches left behind by the extinction of birds and have taken to the air in true flight. They have sharp teeth on powerful protocyl jaws which snap out to pluck prey from the water. The ocean flish is a species of maritime flish living around the coasts of Pangaea II and the global ocean in 200 million AD. The ocean flish has a similar our lifestyle to modern-day seagulls and other coastal fishing birds. But since the majority of marine fish are extinct in 200 million AD, the flish feeds on silver swimmers. There are a number of closely related species of ocean flish, including a grebe-like species, 
a tern-like species, an albatross-like species, an avocet-like species, a skew-like species, and a cormorant-like species. The ocean flish appears to be the oldest and most basal of the flish species, as it resembles its cod ancestors more closely than any of the other flish species. It evolved to fill the niche left by extinct seabirds like seagulls and petrels. Closely related species soon diverged to fill other niches, the grebe flish evolved as a filter feeder, the albatross flish evolved as a migratory hunter, and the skua flish evolved as a scavenger. Unlike its cousins on dry land, the ocean flish has retained the general physical form of a cod, with large dorsal, anal, and ventral fines, which appear to be useless, simply remnants of the flish's former in the water. The ocean flish's large caudal fin is rotated 90 degrees, resembling a whale's fluke. This makeshift tail is used for takeoff prior to flight. A single powerful thrust of its tail can lift a floating ocean flish clear of the surface, allowing the first sweep of its flying fins to get it airborne immediately. The lateral spread of the caudal fin also provides a control surface, allowing the flish to steer and maneuver while in flight. The ocean flish's primary jaw has evolved to resemble the bill of a bird, with blue and red stripes. However, inside the flish's mouth there is a second set of pharyngeal jaws containing teeth. This set of jaws is larger, raw and red, and can be directed to either the left or the right, improving the flish's ability to pluck prey from the water. In order to float on the surface of the water, ocean flish store air in the lungs, have fat reserves around their chest, and are covered in waterproof, insulating scales. Their flying fins can stretch over their backs like sails and their pelvic fins reach into the sea like a keel, steadying the animals as they float. Ocean flish are social animals which hunt in small groups circling the ocean and searching for prey before swooping down and grabbing their food with their pharyngeal jaws. When they need to rest during flight they land on the surface of the ocean and float there buoyed by the air in their lungs and their fat reserves however ocean flish go to the sea only to hunt, at dusk the flocks return to roost on the rocky outcrops of coastal cliff face where they nest. Different subspecies of ocean flish occupied every different ecological niche for a coastal flying animal the most common species played the role of a basic seabird's use as a seagull flying around the coast in flocks and occasionally diving down to catch silver swimmers all species of ocean flish are preyed on by the rainbow squid. However perhaps the ocean flish's most important ecological role is in the rainshadow desert on the other side of the Pangaea II coastal mountain range ocean flish along with other marine animals are cast over the mountains during regular hypercanes and tropical storms their bodies known as flishrex are the only food sources for carnivorous animals in the desert and the bumble beetle requires a flish carcass for reproduction without the ocean flish the entire ecosystem of this rainshadow desert would collapse. The global ocean is patrolled by loose groupings of sharkopaths covering a large expanse of water if one happens upon a prey animal it sets off a flashing sequence in bioluminescent patches along its side this visual signal penetrates the water and can be picked up by the sharkopath's closet neighbor the neighbor repeats the signaling process and soon the whole group of sharkopaths is aware of the presence of food and starts to home in on its quarry. The sharkopath is a species of pack-hunting bioluminescent kitefin shark native to the global ocean of 200 million AD they are the apex predators of the global ocean. The sharkopath evolved from a kind of kitefin shark which survived the mass extinction like the already bioluminescent spined pygmy shark. The sharks survived the 100 million AD mass extinction just as they had survived several previous mass extinctions but the formation of Pangaea II and the global ocean presented them with some problems with a single reek time equals 0.2 s greater than vast ocean pre is now widely dispersed with large stretches of empty water between prey items and a single shark hunting randomly would be unlikely to come across enough prey to sustain it because of this own group of sharks evolved to become pack hunters developing bioluminescence in order to better communicate with one another the simple primitive design of the shark has proved itself extremely effective and the sharkopath's biology is almost no different to that of its human-era ancestors one of its few new features is a series of bioluminescent patches running along its sides creating a light which penetrates the water and can be picked up by a sharkopath's closest neighbor this bioluminescence is controlled by the sharkopath's brain. 
Human-era sharks had highly evolved sensory organs, thousands of small pits in their heads which detected water pressure changes and electric discharges, and cells in their nasal passages which picked up traces of prey the sharkopath retains all of these sensory organs and has even improved upon them, the ridges on its head contain organs which sense the slightest trace of scent. Sharkopaths are pack hunting animals which patrol to the ocean in loose groupings when a sharkopath detects prey it begins to flash the luminescent patches on its sights alerting its neighbors that prey is nearby as the scent becomes stronger the flashing becomes more and more rapid. Sharkopaths are generalist predators and will hunt most marine animals including silver swimmers but often work together to hunt the enormous rainbow squid which congregate in the shallow waters off Pangaea II's southern peninsula during the breeding season although rainbow squids can camouflage themselves sharkopaths can still detect their presence by using their sensory organs which pick up on the electrical discharge from the rainbow squid's nervous system. Sometimes several flocks of ocean flish will gather above one whirling silver swimmer shoal suddenly a rainbow squid tentacle will snap from the water surface seizing a flish and disappears the shoal then vanishes as well and in its place appears a broader shape, the back of the enormous animal drifting just below the surface part of the shoal is not a shoal at all. Two's, greater than but the changing pattern on the skin of this beast. The rainbow squid is a species of highly intelligent predatory squid native to the global ocean of 200 million AD. With a body the size of a finback whale and tentacles of a similar length, the rainbow squid is by far the biggest animal in the global ocean. The rainbow squid is a very large animal, with a body 20 meters long, and tentacles of similar length. Its eyes are about a meter in diameter. It has a very large brain, and is highly intelligent, even more so than human era squid. The rainbow squid's most distinguishing feature is its ability to change color at will by using muscular sacs on the surface of its skin called chromatophores. These can be expanded or contracted at will, produing color changes or flowing patterns over the whole animal. Each chromatophore is part of a complex nervous system and is controlled by a nerve, so the rainbow squid's brain is by necessity immense and very powerful. Some of the chromatophores also contain symbiotic, luminous bacteria, allowing the squid to incorporate light into its displays. Using its chromatophores, the rainbow squid can hide from sight by merging with the green of the ocean, flash up a dramatic light display to scare off potential predators, and produce a flowing pattern of colored patches to mimic the motion of a silver swimmer shoal. Its senses are so acute that it is able to immediately choose the appropriate display for any situation. Human-era cephalopods rarely lived for more than around two years, because they died after reproducing. The rainbow squid has finally escaped this live-fast-die-young cycle and, with almost no predators, can live for up to a hundred years. Rainbow squids are predatory animals which attract prey by changing their appearance to mimic smaller animals. They are usually solitary animals which range across the ocean, but they gather in large groups around the shallow waters around Pangaea II's southwestern cape once a year to breed. On the night of the full moon on the autumnal equinox, the global ocean's entire population of rainbow squids gathers off the southwestern cape, in shallow waters near seamounts. To compete for a mate, male rainbow squids put on vivid displays of color and light, the better the display, the more successful the individual is likely to be in hunting, and the more likely to produce equally successful offspring, so the male with the most vivid display is the most likely to mate. Rainbow squids prey on the various species of maritime ocean flesh, luring them in close enough to catch by camouflaging themselves as shoals of silver swimmers. To ensure they are not themselves attacked during a hunt, they turn their bottom halves the same color as the sky. It is not known if rainbow squids hunt silver swimmers themselves, but it's unlikely the squid can survive only on flesh. Due to their size, rainbow squids have few enemies, but they are preyed on by sharkopaths, pack hunting sharks. Sharkopaths can see through the camouflage of a rainbow squid by using their sensory organs to detect electrical activity in the squid's nervous system, 